we can start. If there are any questions, you can just ask them. Uh, the paper stays available. Uh, I'm a member of the Democracy Squad in Belgium, and we always can discuss it afterwards via email or whatever. It's uh, just meant to be a platform for discussion, and it has nothing to do with the uh, point of view of anyone. Because transparency is one of the key issues of the Pirate Party, I want to go into that because it's very important that what we say, we ask transparency from the government, but then it's more, even more important to learn ourselves to use the proper sentence, the proper words, if we want to say something. And I've chosen two words to demonstrate this, and that is inflation and democracy. Two words who are often used by politicians and even in the party in, in a meaning, it, it has no meaning on itself. These are what we call container notions. The container notion doesn't say anything about itself. You have to explain it. That is why it's used by politicians so often, because they can do afterwards whatever they want by using those words. The container notion, like inflation, is often used, but it's not what they are saying, but what are they meaning by it. That is what's important. In Flanders we have a professor, Jan Blomart, who translates what politicians are saying in what they are meaning. He is a political left-wing, but that doesn't matter because he doesn't hide it. But then you can, you can see what, what he is doing. If we are going to talk about, they often talk about inflation, what do they mean? Inflation is a verb to inflate. You can inflate the monetary mass and that is increasing money. Increasing money is done by printing money, if, if we take it simply. And when you print money, you are devaluating it. And that is already something we understand. Inflation on itself doesn't say anything, but devaluation we do understand. When you are printing money and everything else stays the same, prices go down, go up. You have to pay more money, so you have the devaluation. No, these days, uh, printing money isn't done by printing it, but by lending it. Uh, and this has uh, uh, interest, interest bearing money. So we have to pay interest on money that is only created uh, by thin air, by private banks. Devaluation is also uh, used by government to keep prices constant, on a constant level. Because productivity is uh, growing, normally prices go down, but that is something economists doesn't want because uh, you just hoard your money and wait until the prices go down and that is uh, in a consumption uh, society is not wanted. So they print money, uh, money devaluates and you are spending it. We never hear government say we are going to print money in order to devalue it. They are always using the word inflation. Why? Well, then you don't know what they are saying. That is what they, what they want. Sorry, I have to bring something. So another word for inflation is 
inflation tax. You never hear that using by government. But inflation is in fact an inflation tax because your money is devaluating. So if you want to say something uh, from uh, the party about money, you have to use the correct words that mean something and not using a uh, campaigner uh, to express yourself. The same thing with democracy. Democracy is... Yeah? Yeah, well, I guess inflation is just a consequence of a number of things, among which one important thing is the printing of money. I mean, I, mean, I have difficulty in some, yeah, comparing inflation and printing of money because there are two different things in, in two ways. Uh, one is there are a number of things going on, among which money printing, which devaluates uh, money. I mean, on a more local scale, there are also a lot of issues going on. Um, and and uh, the inflation that we talk about, we hear in the, in the news, that's, that's more of a consequence of that, I think. But it's, 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 I guess there are two, at least two meanings. Yeah, there, there are a lot of things going on. That's why, why I said when everything stays the same and you are yeah. printing money, you are inflating the monetary mass, and then you have a devaluation of your money. I agree with that, yeah. Yeah, but, to, but there is indeed a lot of things that are going on. But what I wanted to emphasize is that government never tell, oh, we are going to print some money in order to devaluate our money. But that is what they are doing. But they never say it. Democracy. Uh, in practice, it means legislation by the people. It can be executed direct or by representation. Representation doesn't mean election. It can be by sortition, is an appointment by lot, and the worst kind is by election. But we are used that they are politicians are using democracy, even the private party is using the word democracy for all kinds of things. Internal organization is democratically done. It has nothing to do with legislation by the people, but still we are using the word democracy. They are using it on every occasion they can because they want to brainwash us that we are living in a democracy, which we are not. And that is why democracy is also a container notion. You can say everything and cover everything up with using it, but what does it mean? When politicians are using it, they, are, they mean probably a parliament or an elected uh, government or something like that, but they don't say what they mean. You can... Uh, Use free elections, that's another notion, and then we know what you are talking about. If you say we have free elections uh, in order to choose a chairman of our party, uh, everyone can participate, everyone can vote, everyone can uh, be a candidate or whatever. Those are free elections, and that has nothing to do with democracy, it's a part of it. Uh, as we know, uh, the Charter of uh, Human Rights, the European, uh, European Human Rights, are only talking about free elections. They don't talk about democracy. They knew what they were writing. They don't talk about it. We have the right to free elections. Elections are choosing a leader. It's nothing not, not bad. We need leaders. We need people who can lead an organization and we elect them. But that is not a democracy. That's something else. But then what is democracy? Well, we all know from ancient history a town hall, town hall meeting that can be uh, an example of a democracy. We all meet. It has to be a, a legisl legislative level and we all meet to decide about laws and we vote for it and that is a democracy in the ancient uh, times. 
democracy through electoral representation. The, if you look at uh, some political scientists, uh, Benoît Manet is uh, one of them, they are saying that uh, they are agreeing that uh, elections are arist an elected aristocracy. When we elect people into office, it is an elected aristocracy. It has some democratic elements. He doesn't say that it is dem a democracy. He says only it has a democratic element. Now, what can that element be? It became less aristocrat aristocrat aristocracy, yes, uh, with universal suffrage. When everybody got the right to vote, it became more democratic. It, be it had a democratic element. But that's all. But let's look at it, the element. Uh, it is an individual right to vote. It has to be an individual right to be a candidate. We agree that those both elements are in the rules we have in our uh, political system. But then there has to be also equality. And that equality on part of the voters doesn't exist anymore. We have a threshold in Belgium of 5% for the first seat. Without the first seat, you don't have subsidies. You don't have money. So a candidate without money is not on an equal level with a candidate with party subsidies, and so on. The calculation system for the seats is in favor of the big parties. It's called in Belgium the system don't, I don't know in, in other countries, but it is in favor of the big parties. So there is no, no equality there. It is in favor of the order of the list of candidates who, who is presented by the parties. So there is no equality left there. So we can agree with Bernard Manin that there is perhaps a democratic element in our political system, but it doesn't exist anymore. Furthermore, we have party discipline. Party discipline enforced on our elected representatives. They have to vote, you can see that, they are voting in party blocks, so they have to obey the party. So we have, in fact, an elected aristocracy, and on top of that, a particracy. I don't know what democracy, the kind of democracy it is, but not something we want. We don't like it. Whatever system we use, it is only a tool. And it has to be accepted. The acceptability of our political system is decreasing every year. In the World Economic Forum in Davos, people were very uh, inquired, uh, very, I don't know, uh, because the Edelman barometer tells them every year that trust in government is declining. Every year, year after year. Now the people in Davos are not concerned about democracy, but about stability. It's about money perhaps, and they don't care about uh, the system, but they do see that it is collapsing. And that is very worrying. When there is nothing else in place, when the system collapses, you can see it in Northern Europe, in the Ukraine, in Northern Africa. We saw it when, when the system collapsed, it, it's uh, violent and uh, bloodshed, and that is not what they want and not what we want. So it would be best to have a system in place that can replace a collapsing system. So. We can talk about sovereignty. Sovereignty is a word that is not used by our politicians, not in a, my country at least. Sovereignty means that there is no ruler above the people. In the UK, sovereignty is taken very seriously. We are talking about it, 
to have a parliamentary sovereignty or a parliamentary uh, democracy, and they are very serious about their sovereignty. There is no law that they can accept that can be changed by the next parliament. So that in that way they are sovereign. The basic ingredients of a democracy is an agenda setting, an initiative, discussion and debate about the initiative, and then the decision who, is, who has to be a binding legislation. That could be a democracy. It could be also, there are no direct democracies, as far as I know, who are working only directly. They are always in a combination of a representative system, like Switzerland has representative, represented, elected representatives next to a direct democracy. Half of the states in the United States had a direct democracy, more or less the same system as in Switzerland, but more direct. Uh, by more direct, I mean in Switzerland, the government can uh, launch a counter-proposal when an initiative is accepted. In the United States, in most states of the United States, it can't be done. There is some change now uh, at the moment in the state of Utah, where when you have collected half of your signatures uh, necessary to launch an initiative, then you can ask the state government to do a counter-proposal. But that is, uh, the systems are always changing, certainly when people can initiate it. Our system is also changing, but uh, by decision of the politicians. Yeah, well, I can't say it better than uh, the sovereignty described in the UK. The principle of parliamentary sovereignty is the unshakable keystone of Britain's judicial system. It guarantees the continued supremacy of parliament. In their case, of course, a codified constitution which may, which in many other countries restrict the powers of government does not exist in Britain. Not many people know that they don't have a constitution. Nor New Zealand has no constitution and perhaps other countries doesn't have it. Uh, sovereignty is lying there in Parliament, or in Switzerland is lying by the people. But you, you have to know who is sovereign. I don't know it in Belgium, not our Parliament, maybe Europe, but they don't talk about it. Thus the only check of the power of Parliament is the sovereignty of future, future parliaments, legislation can always be overturned, treaties can always be broken, and participation in the European Union is never truly binding. They are sovereign. They can leave if they want, and why not? Secession is, we can talk about secession, not in Europe, but it has uh, to be a possibility. So we have to remind the major uh, parts of a democracy is agenda setting, discussion and decision making. Now, pilots and democracy, yeah, well, that's from Wikipedia, we can skip that. We, and it's nevertheless uh, worth to, to read it. The captain was elected and could be disposed by the voters of the crew. That is what we said and explained an aristocracy. They are choosing a leader. That is what elections are about. And that it's necessary to do it. The crew and not the captain decided whether to attack a particular ship. In their uh, situation, they were deciding policy. That is what the people have to do or could do. To complete pilot democracy, we can say that when the crews of the ships had to send a delegation for the general meeting of the fleet, in order to decide about the general action, each ship crew appointed its representatives by sortition. That is a democratic representation, not by election. Leaders are elected, people are represented by sortition. 
Anybody? No. We go on. What is wrong with our with elections? Well, not a wrong, of course. The only thing is that we are told over and over again that it is democracy. We are not happy with it. It's as simple as that. You can call it whatever you want. We don't like it. We don't want it. We do feel that it is not what we want. So we can see that trust in government and politicians is declining year after year. It is not the Edelman Barometer uh, bar uh, that was shown at uh, Davos, but it's more or less the same. It is going down every year. We don't trust our politicians anymore. And they give us free elections, an elected representative system. We do see in Ukraine after 20 years that it doesn't work. There is no balance of power. And that is what is needed. Parliamentary power has to be balanced with people power. And that is not, by, not done by elections every four years. That is not a balance of power. Yeah. I just want to know, is, there, is there a correlation between the, the jobs upwards and elections, or maybe the opposite? What? Uh, the, well, the variability in, uh, in this graph, uh, is there a relation with elections? I mean, I, I can imagine that... No, I, I don't people. know. I don't know why it's uh, going up and down. It, it's, uh, it, uh, it's the result of polls. What influences polls? Yeah, it can be a lot. It can be everything. At, at that moment, it can be everything. But we do see that in Switzerland, for instance, that, that's the case I, I do know more or less, that participation in elections is year, not year after year, but election after election is growing. While in our part of Europe, it is going down. Why is that? Well, it's a very different system. That is why it's, that's the only explanation I have. Well, a political scientists for the moment are very concerned about what is happening. And they are looking for answers, why is it happening? And there is a recent book from uh, a Canadian professor in uh, politics, uh, Francis Dupuy-Berry, and uh, for the moment only in French, uh, Democracy, the Political history, history of a World. The political History of a World. And he did a lot of research about it, and we know from the ancient Greeks what it meant, but his research focused on what, what were the people thinking when they developed our system of elected representation. And that is about the late 1700s, the revolution in France and in the United States. And he found historical evidence that those people were opposing democracy. They, they, were new, they knew what they, they were doing. They, they were installing an aristocracy, an elected aristocracy. That was what they wanted to do. And uh, they don't have universal suffrage at that time. Only people who were wealthy and educated, like priests and, and so on, uh, had the right to vote. It was really an aristocracy system. And then we, we come to the uh, democratic element uh, that Bernard Manin mentioned. We came to the universal suffrage that changed a little bit, that gives a democratic element in the system, but nothing more. And even that element, as we saw it, is, uh, is gone for the moment. Why did it disappear? 
Well, uh, why did that disappear? Because the parties came up. Political parties were not, uh, at that moment, did not exist. It was an evolution that wasn't uh, foreseen at that moment. Now, now the political parties have taken the power. It is a particularly above elected uh, aristocracy. So, so from the beginning of the French Revolution, at least, they, I mean, they didn't see it evolving like this. I mean, it's not like a conspiracy. No, no, they didn't see it, but it wasn't intended as a democracy neither. It was intended to be an aristocracy. The best of our people, at those times, uh, people were illiterate. At those times, it, it was a good step. It was an evolutionary step from hereditary, hereditary uh, an inherited aristocracy. And from an hereditary aristocracy towards an, ele an elected aristocracy was already an enormous step. But then to universal suffrage was was also an enormous step, but then it stopped. Then political parties took over, and there is nothing left of the democratic element in the system. That is why the system is collapsing, in my view. And it is recognized uh, by more and more political scientists that perhaps the cause is that it wasn't designed to be a democracy. We can patch it up a little bit, left and right. Now they are trying uh, to patch it up with participation events. Well, I'm in favor of participation events because it will speed up the democracy, the real democracy, because people will get frustrated because politicians will, will cherry-picking uh, the results of uh, participation events or ignore them. Uh, it's now uh, for about 20 years that participation events are starting. And there are a lot of studies showing us that uh, they end, in most cases, they end up in frustration by the participants because uh, nothing is done with it or it's misused or, or whatever by politicians. But I think it's a good step because now we are sleepwalking and maybe that will wake us up. Politicians took away the civil engagement of, of our people. We are not engaged in political, in civil service anymore. Not so in Switzerland. They have the militia system in politics and in the army. They still have the militia system, which was 200 years ago was uh, very common. Everybody was engaged in, in some civic uh, events. But they took that away. They are uh, full-time, full-paid and overpaid uh, politicians. They took everything away about politics. And when you are now uh, talking about uh, engaging in politics, people say, I don't like politics. I don't have time for it. Uh, I pay them enough, <laughs> let them do it. But that won't change anything, of course. Yeah, sovereignty of the people. We need to be sovereign. There are some basic needs. Freedom of speech, which we don't have anymore. We have all kinds of uh, legislation about what we can say and can't say. Of course, there is a limit, but it hasn't been uh, about the Holocaust of, or whatever. Uh, the, the, the argument of, uh, against the freedom of speech is uh, when I shout or fire, uh, everybody is going to run. That's not freedom of speech. Something that is not allowed can be compared with an act. If I start firing sirens, that's the same thing as shouting fire. That is not allowed. That is not freedom of speech. When I say I will kill you, that is comparable with the act to put a gun to your head. And that is not allowed. That is not freedom of speech. 
freedom of organization. I think we, we still have that transparency in government. Yeah, well, we, we had that. Uh, respect for all the people, that is certainly needed, even in a democracy. We can't have a democracy with a majority voting if you don't respect people. We have to trust each other or democracy is impossible. That's the basic, basic fundamental need of a democracy, that is to trust each other and we have to learn that. You can't, uh, oh, you can't uh, imply that or uh, say to people you have to trust each other, you have to, to learn it. And we have to, we need a reliable justice department. Talking about laws is a totally waste of time if you can't rely on your justice department. Sometimes uh, people are asking above democracy, a judicial review, some kind of uh, uh, constitution and a constitutional uh, justice department that is above the people. And that has, so in, the, in the United States they have that, the constitution and the constitutional courts are judging about the people, the referenda and the initiatives of uh, people. And then you can see there is a recent study of it, the, the difference of judging those initiatives when the judges themselves are elected or if they are appointed by politicians or if they are appointed for life, that all those factors are influencing their judgment. So, it is not a solution. You, you trust each other and you have a democracy or you don't trust each other and you have something else or something else to, something else to develop but you can't have thought. You, you have sovereignty or you haven't. It's as simple as that. Yeah, maybe so should judges be elected or not? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Either. It's just a question. That's not a question. The question was sovereignty. If you place judges above uh, the sovereignty of the people, you are not sovereign anymore. The judges are making the rulings. Is that the kind of uh, system we want? Well, but what does reliability mean then? What? One one page back. So reliability. I think was. Can you switch one slide back, please? No, I can't go. <laughs> I can't go back. Okay. So I think it was reliability on judgment or something. Was it the last point? Uh, <coughs> Assistance. Yes, that's for common laws. When people decide by a referendum about a law they, they want implemented, you have to rely on the Justice Department to implement it. Okay. You have to trust... But the justice needs to be sovereign itself. What? <laughs> The Justice Department needs to be sovereign itself. You no, know, we have a separation of powers. You have the legislation, and then you have 
the, the Justice Department that has to see that the legislation is applied. Right. Just that, that they can make their own interpretation, of course, but that's a fact, yeah. It's just a condition. I mean, it's, it's how you get a reliable justice department, it's not a question. It's no use to vote about laws <coughs> when you don't have a justice department that can implement them. If you, I can give a practical example of that you have China. China obviously has the rule of the rule of law and actually has one of the most modern law system in the world because it's been created over the last ten years. So um, actually you have many jurists saying, well, the, in China the problem is not the book. Because the book is actually quite okay. It's been written newly by professionals, it's fine. But the judges do whatever they want with it. You have to say, well, it's all, we can do whatever we want with it. So they just do whatever, and then the book doesn't matter. So that, so you, that's a practical example. Effectively, you do not have the book law. I mean, only written. Yeah, it's written. Well, the, the, the official propaganda says we have the rule of law in China. And as a matter of fact, they have a law which is just not applied. What, what he said, and it is important, I think it's the balance of power. Yeah. So justice must be in balance with something else. So just sovereign justice alone is a nonsense, I think. So we, we must see it in a, in a whole. It's a clear Yes. But I think that's a very important question. Yes, I, I agree that it's a reliable justice department is very important to us, but how, how do we get, to, I think this is your question, right? Yeah, right, right. right. So how, how do we get this reliable? Yeah, then you have the choice uh, to elect judges or to appoint judges by politicians. You can appoint them for life or a certain period. And you, you can observe that the results are different. Yeah, you mentioned that. So yeah. That influence the, 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 the judgment. It influence the, 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 they are not super, super people. They are people like, like, like we are. They, are. they can be influenced. Of course. Of course. So, and, and my question was, what's your idea about that? Because I wonder that it's, that it's, list, uh, that it's listed here as, as, a, yeah, as a condition that we rely on the justice department. So, of course, we have the trials of, of uh, the spread the power, but what now the best way to implement well, this reliable justice? Eventually, maybe ever we have the choice, we can decide what we want. I can imagine that in Switzerland people can launch an initiative and say we want to elect our judges. We can't. And if it doesn't work, well, we appoint them. Maybe it works better. Maybe it works there is no perfect system. We have to try it. We have to compare it with other systems. There is no perfect system, and I th don't think we will ever have it. But we must have, in my view, the possibility, an easier possibility to change things before it collapses. Yes, Pablo. <laughs> I, I um, have a little thing to add to freedom of speech. I was doing a presentation. But uh, I, there was, um, in ancient Greece, there was uh, another category, which was not freedom of speech, but the freedom to be heard, or the right to be heard, which was called isegoria. Yeah. isegoria. And um, some people said that in t today's democratic systems, uh, as long as you have uh, private controlled uh, TV and newspapers that uh, push their voice uh, in a bigger way than, than uh, people's voice, you cannot have a democracy because political things are worked on newspapers and TV and for everybody it's very important what the other people think and we think it's what it's in TV and on, on the newspaper. 
And so some people say that it's not just freedom of speech. I can write some papers at home and nobody will take me to prison. But if, I, if people don't really have time to listen to me uh, or to all, other people to listen between themselves, it can also be a hindrance to democracy. So not only freedom of speech, but the right to be heard or well, or that's what we call agenda over, setting. Over. The agenda setting is very important. We don't have in our system the political power or the power to put something on the agenda. The Swiss have, they can launch an initiative, they, they have to uh, have a threshold of signatures, and then they can launch an agenda point. The ECR is also some kind of agenda setting. Then you are heard. In most of our countries, we have the right to petition. Even in Belgium, we have the right to petition. You, you can ask to be heard by the politicians. I'm pushing it more. I, I, I would agree that that's also. Yeah, again, that's more to the media, the one with all the normal media. Because if I talk to anybody, if we live in a democracy, it's about talking with. Well, a very, very powerful tool is the initiative. When you collect enough signatures, you have the right to, uh, to launch a proposal, a law proposal. And that is a very strong uh, tool to have something on the agenda. Oh. You have 10 minutes on the time now. What? You have 10 minutes over the time now. 10 minutes over the time. Over the time. It's now oh, sorry. Since 10 minutes is break. But you can have break for additional 10 minutes, and what you do with your break is up to you, so you can also discuss if you like. But after that, the next one starts. Okay, thanks. Well, I'm, I'm halfway, more or less. Yes. <laughs> very, very fast. Major types of uh, direct, in combination with representative democracy, direct California, which is the biggest direct democracy we know for the moment. Indirect is Switzerland, where the elected representatives have the right to make a counter proposal. And now Utah, uh, more or less. Uh, the possibilities become part of the tactics, of course, as citizens are launching an initiative, representatives are launching a counter proposal. Uh, it, this takes uh, years and, and discussions for citizens have the right to withdraw their initiative or to stand by it. Uh, they can say the government proposal is good enough. We, we stop uh, our initiative and the government proposal goes up. But still, the people can launch a referendum against the government proposal. You have always the right to oppose to a government proposal. And maybe that is uh, an evolution that the Swiss system doesn't start it like it is today. They started with the right to freedom. Maybe we have to think on a European level to start with such uh, a veto right also. After the ECI, that we have a veto right uh, of some kind against a European law proposal. It's a, just a possibility. It's maybe a next step. <coughs> Well, political views, well, we all have uh, different political views from libertarian uh, democracy. They are not democrats, of course, uh, because most democracies are majority rule, and that is certainly not libertarian. But when you, when you try to uh, make it the system of majority rule better, to go to a super majority, you end up with the, the uh, dictatorship of a minority, of course. <laughs> so uh, the solutions are not always better than, than the problem. You have to be careful with what you are doing. Constitutional, some people want the constitution, but most, in most cases the constitution is placed with the constitutional court above the sovereignty of the people. So you are not sovereign anymore. Populist, there is no authority above the people. That is, and that those, com those uh, political views are combined in the Swiss system because it is working bottom-up. The municipalities are very strong in their legislation. It's the first 
system. They have three citizenship in citizenships, in fact, uh, municipal citizenship, cantonal, and federal. So uh, every political view has its compromise, and I think we always will have a compromise uh, to be. Uh, to live with it because uh, we all have different views. Yeah, we have the backbone of uh, the Swiss uh, system referendum initiative, free call, free participation. Well, you, you can participate in, in votes, in voting, or you can't. It's, it's free participation. But the result is binding. It's not like the ECR that they can do whatever they want. The result is, is binding. Liquid democracy. Well, there are parties all over the world starting up now with no program. That's uh, the part we, we don't uh, can discuss because if we are running out of time. Parties without any program are proposing only liquid democracy. It is very difficult to sell this because it's only directed to early adapters. Uh, people are, are mostly very conventional when it is uh, concerning politics. It's difficult to sell. Uh, the first thing they ask is, what, oh, it's nice, you are starting a political party, what is your program? I have no program, you have to decide yourself. <laughs> uh, you are going down. Uh, I don't have any time for politics, it doesn't interest me, uh, so it's very difficult to sell, but nevertheless in Australia it's now the third time that they are participating in elections. It's already 12 years that they are going on. We have one party in uh, Sweden, DemoX, Democratic Experiment, who has one elected representative with, it, with this system. He wrote a book, uh, The Little Horde of Athens, because liquid democracy, in my view, is a Trojan horse. It can be used to force an entry, but then it is done. So if you have emotional and uh, online voting, instant voting, it is very dangerous. But it can be used as a Trojan horse. I think next speaker is arrived, and we have to close boundaries. Yeah, well. You can see the text online. If you have questions, you are welcome. Next speaker, please. <laughs>